Hello, hi, um, a big welcome to one and all. I'm so glad that you are here. As a welcome, I'd like you to put your hand together, clap, and put in the middle of your body. And why we do this is not so much because of relig any religious reason. It's because we want to connect our body with our mind right away. So I just want to express my gratitude that you are here today. And as Fadil has mentioned just now, I'm a psychotherapist. I've been working with people on anxiety. And what a time we are living in right now, COVID-19, and who is not experiencing anxiety? I'm sure you and myself even, um, more or less, I'm feeling a, a spikes of anxiety. And we really need to learn how we can manage that so that we can wave through right through this time with grace and with resilience. And this is what today's talk is about, build mental resilience. I'm so glad you are here. And in this talk, we are going to use our body. It's not just a one-way direction. I invite you to fully participate in this interactive talk and give feedback and leave your comment. And there will be also a few pool questions. I'd like to hear your feedback. All right, let's start with um, this idea of how we are using our body as a vehicle to manage stress. All right, have you been um, walking in the rain? Maybe um, one day, in, at least one day in your lifetime. How do you feel when the rain comes hitting your body? For me, I feel alive. I feel like I can sense my entire body being activated. And have you uh, moved your hands on an open field on tall grasses? Um, you know, during COVID-19, a lot of our, um, our workers are quarantined, so the uh, grasses start to grow really tall. And I love to just uh, move my hands around to feel the sensation on the hands. Yeah. So why do we need to um, activate our body to feel? Because we learned best when we activate the entire body in our learning. So that's the whole reason why I asked you to put your hands together in a clap form earlier on. And uh, our body is really the vehicle to manage stress. When we are feeling stress, we actually produce this stress hormones called cortisol. Cortisol is actually produced by adrenal glands, which is this triangle um, organs that is on top, sitting on top of our kidneys. Um, when we have cortisols, it actually um, control our mood, our motivations and our fear. And it fuels our fight and flight reactions. And when the body is on high alert, cortisol can alter or shut down functions such as our digestions, our reproductive systems, our immune system, and even our growth processes. So cortisol play a very important role, isn't it? And don't you think that we need to manage the stress hormones in our body? All right. When we experience constant stress, do you know what are uh, the important health consequence to them. Basically, when we feel very highly stressed for a long period of time, we can slip into high anxiety and depression. We may have headaches, heart diseases, concentration problem, digestion problem, trouble sleeping, and even weight gain, depending on how you usually cope with stress. So my first pool question to you will be, which of the following uh, bodies respond to stress? So I will need Fadil to put it up. All right, it's there. So please um, select one of these. And um, of course, by now you know that um, our body is the way to tell us that we are stressed. And it is also the first line of support for us to manage stress. 
and therefore um, it's not about the mind it's not about the knowledge um, it's really about how we are in touch with our body and in this session i would like to uh, try out a few exercises with you i'd like you to try along with me so that you get a sense of how your body works All right, so um, some of the very easy um, exercises that you can do to regulate stress in your body is such as swimming, uh, walking. These are very gentle exercises, but I would strongly encourage you to try yoga. Um, any form of stretching really activates your muscles and uh, you don't need to go for a full body class you can easily go to uh, youtube to search for maybe even a five minutes or ten minutes um, stretching exercises they are easily available and uh, to do that every morning when you first thing when you wake up and to do that before you sleep basically prepare your body for the day's work and prepare your body for rest when you do it right before your sleep and if you are really short of, short of time and you are feeling the spike of anxiety, uh, I'd like you to try this with me right now. You can actually cup, hit your body, hit around your body to feel a sense of your body back. So, you know, uh, some elderly in the park, they will do this. Uh, they will even like stretch up their hands and then swing it downwards. Yeah. So every time when you put your hands up, the actually the heartbeat increases. And if you want to feel your body breathing, one suggestion I have for you is to actually bend forward. I hope you can see me, uh, see at least uh, upper half of my body. Basically bend forward and curl in. Okay. And when you do this, do you sense that uh, there is movement in your abdominal area, in your belly area, that whenever you take an inhale, the body expands, the abdominal area expands to take in more breath, and you actually breathe deeper that way. So this is one way that you can immediately apply when you are feeling stressed. When you are in the office for a long time at your desk, always take a break like uh, five minutes every hour, at, at least five to 10 minutes every hour to do such physical uh, activities. And um, the other way that I'd like you to try if you are feeling not safe, all right, is to wrap your hands around your body. So try this out with me right now. Put one hand underneath an armpit and the other hand around your body. And just breathe. And do nothing right now. Just listen to your breath. Just feel your body. So this is a method recommended by Peter Levin. Peter Levin is an expert in PTSD, stress, uh, traumatic stress, sorry, post-traumatic stress disorder. It's a condition that is very common if someone has uh, been through a traumatic events such as world war, wars or uh, a car accident. Usually it's a once-off um, stressful event but all of us experience stress and chronic stress really needs to be managed and um, for people for some of you who may not feel safe in certain circumstances this is one way we can regulate by immediately feeling our body as a container of all our emotion and from here you can always do a tensing and re releasing so you tense your body curl inward a bit like what i did just now curl inward and then breathe, inhale, and expand, stretch up, stretch out your entire body. Expand, you can even expand your face, open up, 
your eyes wide. And curl in, hands your entire body. Exhale, curl inward. Again, this is an exercise that you can do just about anywhere, uh, definitely at your work desk. And can you think of any other um, brief exercises that you can do uh, to release stress? Feel free to comment. And one last exercises I'd like you to try is um, to connect if you are full of thoughts, if you have um, lots of thoughts going on and you couldn't just bring yourself back to your body. I'd like you to try putting your uh, one palm on your forehead and another palm on your chest. And for now, just think of nothing. Think of nothing right now. And perhaps even close your eyes and just breathe and feel the connection within your body between your two palms. And once you experience a shift, you can move the palm that is on your forehead now to your belly. All right, to your belly. And again, just focus on your breathing. Think of nothing else. Okay, so these are some brief exercises that you can try. And my next pull question for you would be, which of these brief exercises works best for you? Okay, now let's come to the next activity and this activity will um, it's going, I'm going to show you some pictures and all you have to do is to look at a picture and sense your feeling. Fadil has now screen share uh, on this website, which is um, pointsofyou.com. You don't have to go to this website because he's showing you right now. So all you have to do is to look at his, his uh, screen right now. All right, Fadil, can you um, choose a card? Start the play and uh, choose a card. So by the way, if you like to see the screen being bigger, you can always double click on that uh, screen. Okay, uh, choose resilience, please. And then you choose what is my body telling me, yes. So we can do this after this session on your own. And you can use this as a means to connect with your teammates over Zoom, um, a very fun uh, bonding activities you can do online with your, yeah, with your colleagues, with your friends. All right, so Fadil is going to show um, his the first card after he has finished uh, choosing all the cards. Okay, Fadil, can you show the first card, please? Just go to the card. Yes, all right, so Let's look at this card right now. Do you like it or dislike it? Is it beautiful, calming, strange, mysterious, haunting, joyful, sad, artistic, or something else? Just continue to look at this card. 
And whatever your response is, just notice it. If there are several parts to your response, that's totally normal. Usually we have more than one response, more than one emotion at one time. And my question to you is, how do you know that this is your response to the picture? Try to identify the body sensations that accompany your viewing of the picture. Some of the sensations can be subtle, others will be stronger. Whatever they are, notice them. Do you feel energy move or suddenly stop? Do you feel energy move? How does it move? Is it slowly, fast? In what direction? Is there some kind of rhythm to the sensation? Is it located in any part of your body? Does it feel tense, loose, easy, relaxed, tingling, heavy, light, cool, invigorating, or something else? Pay attention to your breathing and your heartbeat. Notice how your skin feels and how your body feels overall. Experiencing any one of this is the beginning point. Now go to the next picture. So Fadil will have to show us the next picture. All right, now look at this picture and repeat the process. Ask yourself, how do you know that this is your emotional reaction to this picture? Try to identify the sensations that underline your reaction to the picture. Some of the sensations may be strong and others more subtle. Whatever they are, just notice them. Do you feel any kind of tension or energy? How does your body feel overall? Does your reaction feel tense, powerful, fuzzy, smooth, jagged, tangled, numb, hot, loose, sticky, relaxed, some bulk? Ask yourself what material it seems to be made of. Do you feel the energy move? And how does it move? Is it slow, fast? In what direction? Is there some kind of swell to the sensation? Where is it located? Be as specific as you can. How do you know what your reaction is? And let's now move to the third picture. The third picture. Yes. All right, so the, the, this third picture. Again, notice your own reaction to the third picture. Take your time to repeat this process again. Focus on how you feel. Maybe even just for one minute. Just fully focus on how you feel. Does this picture connect with any memories of the past? or any person. Keep reminding yourself to sense as sensation, not as emotions or thoughts. If you notice yourself interpreting the picture, sense how your body reacts to your interpretation. Then drop the interpretation and come back to simply sensing your body sensations. If you cannot drop your interpretation, write it down somewhere so you know you can always come back to it. Then go back to feeling sensations in your body. Do you notice any change in how your body feels after letting go of any thoughts? Do you sense any shift in how you feel 
when you simply stay with the sensations. All right. So now you have worked through a process called developing felt sense. Felt sense is coined is a term coined by Peter Levin. Um, it is a description of us having a sense of our body. And whenever you have strong emotions surging up, your body is the first thing that will react. So it can be heart palpitations. If you're anxious, sometimes it's cold sweat. Sometimes it's butterfly in your stomachs. Sometimes it's weak knees. So the body tells you exactly how you feel. And feelings are normal. Emotions are normal. And we want to be in touch with our body so we know how we are feeling so that we can um, assess the environment, whether it's dangerous or friendly, whether we feel comfortable in the environment or not. So emotions is really useful. And uh, for more information about points of view, you guys can um, go to the website and uh, find uh, our country representation. They are Dr. Timothy and Amy Sees. Uh, you can get in touch with them if you want them to conduct a point of view uh, in your company. Okay. The next um, resource that I'd like to bring your attention to is this particular website. It is ptsd.va.gov. So in this website, everything that is provided, provided there is free of charge. Uh, this website is uh, done up by US Department of Veteran Affairs. And I'd like to bring your attention in particular to this app called Mindfulness Coach. All right. Okay. Uh, Fadim, are you able to show the app? Sarah, yeah. is it this one? Uh, no, it's the uh, Mindfulness Coach app. So, okay, um, actually the this URL one? is here. Um, okay, so you guys, right, uh, you can always go to your Google App Store and do type in Mindfulness app, Coach app. This is so far the only free uh, mindfulness app I find uh, online and um, it's 100% free. They have a lot of useful um, audio clips and tips on how you can regulate your anxiety. Um, a lot of, there are a lot of other apps online and um, a lot of them provide free material but not 100% and uh, they will want you to subscribe or they want you to pay extra. Uh, so this is the only one that is 100% uh, free. So I'd like to introduce this to you. Sarah, I think it's up now. Right. Okay. Yeah. So you can see from here, this, uh, just look for this app and download to your mobile phone. So you can use it anytime when you want. Okay. And uh, as you know, uh, I'm the founder of the therapy platform. And for you, dear participants, um, I'm giving you a 10% discount. If you were to book a session, find a therapist, find a counselor that you feel confident in seeing. Uh, we have both online vi uh, video call. You can see the therapist through video call or in person. And you just have to apply the code as written here. And this um, offer is valid until 23rd of October. And um, later on, I'll share more of my contact detail with you. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Okay. Do you think your thoughts matter? So this is a um, quote from Lao Tzu, but it was also quoted by Mahat 
Mahatma Gandhi. Watch your thoughts. They become your words. Watch your words. They become your actions. Watch your actions. They become your habits. Watch your habits. They become your character. Watch your character. They become your destiny. So do you think that um, it's important for us to watch our thoughts? And my last pull question for you is, do you think, can we decide our thoughts? So it's a yes, no. And the answer is yes. We can decide our thoughts. Um, we have the power to choose our thoughts and we have the power to let go of our thoughts the moment we are conscious of them. And how we can be conscious of them is through our body again. Yeah. So when you feel tense, maybe you are thinking of something and immediately pay attention to the moment right before you feel tense to have access to what your thoughts are. But how can you have access to your thoughts unless you are attuned to your own body? And that's the whole reason why I did all the exercise, physical exercise with you just now. That is to be in touch, to have the felt sense in our body. And the, I'm, I'm leaving uh, one of the uh, last part of my talk today is on adapt to changes and cope with uncertainty. So the moment you are able to cope with stress, it is a lot easier to cope with um, changes and to cope with uncertainty. But I'd like to bring your attention to the six core human psychological needs, which, is, um, which was brought up by, famously by, and by Tony Robbins. Okay. Uh, so these are the six psychological needs. They are certainty. We all need to feel some sense of certainty. But interestingly and paradoxically, we need to feel, have a bit of variety in our life as well. So these two, they are kind of like competing. Some of you may have a higher need to have variety and some of you may have a higher need for certainty. And that de depends on your personality. But you will have to give and take in this. So if you have, uh, you like variety, you will have a less stable life. If you love uh, certainty and everything has to be predictable, you may come across your life maybe slightly um, less uh, exciting um, to others or even to yourself. And uh, another needs we have is significance and love and connection. Again, these two needs can be competing each other or it may not. Sometimes when we so focus on building our career, we may uh, want to feel very significant in our, at our workplace, for example. Then we don't have the time to build the connections and the love with our family members, uh, our loved ones. So sometimes these two can be competing. Again, it is up to us on how we juggle with this. And the last two, that is growth and contribution. Growth and co contribution is, um, is, is a spiritual needs we, we have. So when we stop growing, um, we, we are kind of stuck developmentally. You know? So uh, people sometimes may be stuck in their childhood because they have some traumatic experience um, they cannot overcome. Um, so it's very important for us to be able to continue to grow so that we become a fuller human being. Um, and we, when you are growing, actually very naturally you want to contribute. So these are the six core human psychology, psychological needs. And I'm sure once you settle all these needs, uh, you are all set up to actually take care of all the and adapt to all the changes and uncertainties. As a little homework for you, of course, I know that um, I would not be going after you for the homework. This is not a school, but uh, I would encourage you to 
uh, give this question some thoughts after the session. And uh, actually, if, if you are keen for me to send you these PowerPoint slides, uh, please feel free to email me. I will do that for you. Um, here's my contact. All right, before that, uh, take some time to look at the homework. So think about what do you still have? That will give you a sense of certainty. Or what do you used to have? You know, memories, uh, everything that we have. So recall what you used to have. And for uncertainty, maybe you can ask yourself, what is something different I'm facing now? You may not want to judge what you're facing as good or bad, but maybe something different. That's just part of life. We just have to experience different phases of life. And what is my attitude to it? Third question, what is my role at home and at work? That will give you a sense of significance. What do I do? To um, What inspires me? Uh, what do I aspire to be? And fourth question is about connection. Who do I enjoy connection with? Who do I avoid connection with? Do I even enjoy connection? And one of my second last slide, let me get to it. Okay, sorry. Okay, so in fact, this is my last slide already. Um, you, if you have a QR reader, you can do a QR scan, you get my contact over there. Uh, otherwise, you can always email contact at thetherapy.org. Let me type it out for you here. All right, so you can email me. Uh, you have any questions, if you want the PowerPoint slides, I'd love to share more with you. And um, Okay, so it's been a lovely time sharing with you. I hope it has been uh, helpful for you. And uh, do join me at 10. I have a live talk on a fortnightly basis. Uh, visit my Facebook company's Facebook page. You just have to search the therapy platform and you'll be able to find. And I have lots of articles on our company's blog. It's called bettermood.asia. Have a wonderful day ahead. God bless you.